Bonsoir à toutes et à tous. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Pierre Bonis. I'm general director of an association Athens, and I would like to welcome the Minister for Europe and Foreign Affairs, as well as the Federal Council of the Federal Department of the of Environment, Transport, Energy and Communications for Switzerland, State Secretary at the Federal Ministry for Economic Affairs and Energy for Germany, and the CEO of the Internet Society, the ISOC, and the Chair of the IGF Multi-Stakeholder Advisory Group. I'm delighted to be here with you today. I would like to thank the Chair of IGF and the Minister of Foreign Affairs for um, allowing me to moderate this panel. So, I am very lucky to be the di General Director of AFNIC here in France. We have a wonderful team. We do wonderful work, but indeed, given the context, I would also like to highlight that our association has been working on the issue of governance for the last 20 years. So we know that our approach works. It has proved its value. However, this in a context which is quite um, modest, let's say, it's in terms of um, domain names. Now, indeed, we are affected by some of the issues that were uh, mentioned by the President of the French Republic as well as the uh, Director General of UNESCO, even though we are perhaps um, affected by these issues at a, on a slightly smaller scale. So the question that I'd like to ask tonight are what kind of means need to be available so that this multi-stakeholder approach can be as effective as possible when we are addressing non-technical problems, let's say. Now, do we need to be able to address these problems in a technical way? Perhaps there might be some um, diverging views regarding that. But this is really what we need to um, focus on today. How can we use protocol um, to have the desired effect and what consequences might there be of using uh, different types of protocol? Now, we see that there is a crossroads here when we look at internet governance. We're looking at values, principles and ethics and that is meeting at a crossroads with um, technology. And so here we can see that we can mix the technical approach and also the approach offered by politics and by ethics. And I would therefore like the Minister for Europe and Foreign Affairs share, I would like him to share his vision of internet governance with us and the relationship between the government, the private sector and civil society and also the evolution of the IGF. Now, before giving you the floor, Minister, I would just like to say that you were also at a forum looking at cyber um, uh, attacks, and recently, in December, you we also um, put forward the international digital strategy for France. I'll give you the floor. Merci de... Thank you very much for giving me the floor and for reminding the audience about my past work. I'm part of a rather interesting structure here in this panel as well as at the assembly. And so I will essentially am uh, going to be echoing what the President of the Republic already said. That's usually what I end up doing anyway. 
usually not so quickly after he, he finishes speaking, but in any case, this is an occasion for me to uh, perhaps summarize what has been said. I'll be mentioning his initial remarks with regard to the radical changes uh, created by the internet, as well as the dark side of this revolution. If only because you mentioned my previous roles. I'm actually doing the same thing in my current role. It's just a different aspect of this digital re revolution, which is quite concerning to us, first and foremost, uh, when it comes to the issues of terrorism, cybercrime, online harassment, disinformation. All of this is part of my daily job to address. And the idea of uh, this risk mentioned by the president is very relevant today. And therefore, it's important today to address, as you've mentioned, the issue of standards, regulations, because the largest challenge that we are facing is not a technical one, but rather a policy challenge. And what we've invented these days with regard to all of these different issues is standards and regulations. And perhaps beyond these regulations, I'm also thinking about the principles behind them that were mentioned in part by President Macron just now. We know this is a very complex issue. This is indeed quite a thorny problem when we when we uphold certain when when we uh, define certain regulations it's because we're reacting usually to a situation and we have our fellow citizens that obviously want to maintain what we've gained in the digital area while resolving the problems that it faces we have to fight against new uh, threats without undermining digital uh, vitality the vitality of the digital economy as mentioned by the president, we must not give up any fundamental freedoms or allow law to be undermined. But at the same time, governments have to play a positive role to ensure that the law of the jungle does not become the norm in cyberspace. And this is one of the principles mentioned in the Paris uh, call to action with regard to the behavior of private actors that are so important. Uh, when it comes to this issue of the balance of force, using force in uh, cyberspace, because private actors also use force in, in physical space, there's this risk of privatization, what we call digital violence, or privatization with regard to uh, various intrusive actions that could be carried out by companies. Here we need to uphold our responsibilities, each one of us. And so we need to take action to protect and to build these norms that don't necessarily exist yet today. We need to establish them together. We need to establish them in important venues. As this was mentioned in the previous round table, which first and foremost consists of legislative frameworks and the scope of this action is continuing to be defined. Because if there's a law that is only national in scope and does not affect foreign actors, then we might be letting too much slip through the cracks. And there also is the risk of uncoordinated national initiatives that simply leads to a sort of legal arms race and uh, legal chaos. So we need to take a different approach. As mentioned by the UN, there has been work that already has been accomplished, even though sometimes it's self-contradictory or quite complex. We're not going to be able to achieve a well-established legal framework by tomorrow. But as the IGF, you play an important role in proposing concrete solutions to this problem.
because we do need to bring a new kind of multilateralism to the issue with state actors, with civil society actors, and economic actors, each contributing to the development of legislation and regulation. And so, as mentioned by President Macron, there's, a, there's this call to action in order to lay the foundations of regulation in this area. And this call to action also goes out to all of you to help make this happen. This morning, the uh, Paris call to action was launched, and I think that the cornerstone of this call to action is that of trust, the idea of trust, because this idea has come back over and over, trust in the functioning of all social uh, spaces, trust in companies that need to take on their responsibilities with regard to possible vulnerabilities in their system, the trust in the fact that our internet activities can be protected, that we have to reject, for example, internet pirating, piracy, and trust in the foundations of regulation. And I think that the IGF will be a very important player in all of this because this is a pressing situation. And the uh, conflicting voices and risks that we've mentioned before li could lead to fragmentation of cyberspace. And so this is France's position. And we've had experience that has, has shown us that multilateralism, as was in the case for the Paris call to action, can bring, a, bring about great results. So uh, what the same kind of push was taken for anti-mining initiatives or for uh, regulating light weapons, for example. So once again here, France wants to be at the forefront of this movement, wants to be fully involved so that we can actually anticipate uh, new forms of common legislation. I've observed that out of the 50 or so countries that have supported this Paris call to action, there have been all of the countries that the EU have represented. And Europe is a sort of uh, sandbox for regulation, as well as G20 countries, Argentina, G7, and so on. President mentioned, President Macron mentioned this uh, when he spoke earlier. And so all of this constitutes a movement that will allow us to progress toward the legislation we need in order to ensure that we can maintain the benefits of the Internet while minimizing its disadvantages and dangers. That's what I wanted to say, Mr. Moderator. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Minister. Merci infiniment. Thank you very much. Madam Doris Lutar, you represent a country that hosted the first global summit on informatics in Geneva and which last year also hosted the Internet Governance Forum. So your country has always been very much involved in the international and multilateral discussions on internet governance. Perhaps this is also because in Switzerland, as we've heard from our Swiss friends in the IGF, you are used to multilateralism. You're used to sort of on the ground discussions that can help show us the way and can help show us uh, what the benefits are of this multilateral approach. Or more people understand, <laughs> uh, because uh, also we have here an uh, English-speaking uh, panel or majority of English-speaking people. So uh, indeed, uh, last year uh, in Geneva, I, I had the privilege to uh, welcome you. And I think also then we had uh, an, an approach to the uh, IGF that we have seen more organizations, also more intergovernmental organizations coming to the IGF, so this 
I think, I think th this, this shows an increasing interest uh, for the IGF and for the question of governance. And uh, what uh, was told there uh, the first time in the so-called Geneva messages, uh, which I think are very important, that we, do, we should have more importance for the IGF. Everybody agrees on that. But this begins with transparency on what is discussed at the IGF. So, well, I, I'm for many, many years in politics, but I did not know much about the IGF before. So I think you must have a, a, a better platform and more people listening to the IGF. With the Geneva messages, I think that's a very good instrument that you have some kind of synthesis of what, what is discussed uh, within these distinguished guests, that also others who not participate at the IGF have an idea and can also participate. And especially governments, politicians, uh, they don't uh, uh, go very often to conferences. They need uh, some kind of conclusion or recommendation. So I think this should be put forward that you have more interests, more key players, and more political interest. I was uh, six months after the IG of, of, uh, in Geneva, we had the Secretary General who launched this uh, high-level panel on digital uh, uh, cooperation, which I'm, I'm a member of. And here, uh, the governance is at the center of uh, uh, what we have to deliver uh, next uh, April. And the multi-stakeholder approach for governance, I think that's uh, agreed, largely agreed. But what does it mean? What does it mean? Uh, to the UN, within UN organizations. What does it mean to governments? Governments, politicians, actually, they are not used to multi-stakeholder approaches. We in Switzerland, with our direct democracy, we have a lot of consultations. You might say that's some kind of multi-stakeholder approach. But in, in a lot of countries, they have never votations, only elections, uh, all four years. They don't have a lot of interaction neither with citizens, nor with uh, economy, nor with NGOs or IGOs. So I think here we must reflect and we are keen to learn what could be recipes for such a multi-stakeholder approach because what is clear that the old world with policies in an analog world, they are not applicable to the, uh, to the digital world. A lot of uh, policies or laws must be adapted and that's why we had on an international level on uh, common uh, objectives for this uh, uh, internet world, uh, principles which are applicable to all from Burkina Faso, we have the minister here, to uh, uh, South Asia, to, to every country with different levels also of development of the digital infrastructure. We need the inclusiveness, so what does it mean when uh, uh, we have uh, regions which don't have electricity, which don't have a digital infrastructure? So it's easy to talk about a lot of initiatives when you have largely uh, uh, people and regions which don't have anything of these. Uh, so inclusiveness will be one of the uh, decisive elements. And uh, trust, confidence, I think we also share these principles. Human rights are also a common principle internationally agreed. Is it applic applicable to robots? How we handle the ethical questions? So that's why uh, human values must all be all always be and stay at the center of an international governance. So we try hard uh, uh, that we can deliver our report and recommendations in April next year. Uh, and uh, once we will have a draft, we will be very happy to share it with you, also with a multi-stakeholder <laughs> approach that we get a lot of expert information and your advice because it's a process. We launch the process. We don't have uh, uh, the objective that what we will present, that's done. But it's a draft, it's a proposal, and then I think the international community could work and the IGF perhaps could be a forum where the, 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 the additional work can be uh, uh, elaborated until we have in Berlin next year the next IGF.
Thank you very much, Madame Federal Councillor. Uh, um, that was very enlightening. Uh, so I will continue in English uh, because, uh, uh, I mean, if we are talking about democracy, we have to follow the majority of the panel, at least. Um, so, uh, Mr. Secretary of State for the Economy uh, Sector, Christian Pierre. Uh, welcome. You uh, are representing the next host country, but this is not the only thing about Germany, of course. Uh, uh, why Germany is so keen to welcome the IGF next year? You knew you were welcoming it before we knew we would welcome it, by the way. Uh, why are you uh, uh, so keen to welcome the IGF and what are the interests? I mean, uh, Germany has a, a vibrant industry. How do you see the, maybe this is an, an option, the private sector uh, uh, within the uh, multi-stakeholder approach? Uh, what are their role and how they can cooperate with the government? Well, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, I would uh, like to thank France for hosting this year's IGF. Uh, as you <coughs> just uh, told, next year Germany will uh, host uh, the IGF and uh, we want to take uh, our example from you in France and uh, from you in uh, Switzerland uh, to do it at least uh, as good uh, as you did. Um, <coughs> the question for us is how can we strengthen the IGF uh, both uh, nationally and internationally? And it's not about whether we strengthen us, it's about how we are going to do it. This is because we recognize that the IGF is the world's most important platform for discussing the future of the internet. Our multi-stakeholder uh, multi approach is crucial in this. Uh, nowhere else do representatives of national governments, civil society, business, technology and others came, uh, come all together at international level. As equals, they discuss current challenges concerning the internet and the digital transformation. In view of digitization and given that it affects all of us, this is exactly what we need. The internet is the operating system that powers our society. There is a whole range of issues from protecting human rights to data protection, trust, cybersecurity and fair competition, right through the development of new technologies and much else besides. This is why the IGF is so important. The IGF is where different kinds of expertise meet. It's where there is open and inclusive dialogue, where best practices are shared and where the key challenges for the future are identified. It is also where there is a vision of an open, secure, reliable and truly global internet acting as a driving force for innovation and social development free from censorship, discrimination and propaganda. However, we mustn't forget that the IGF is not only there to identify these pressing issues, it's also there to develop an awareness of them among, among the general public. This is also part of its mandate and this is something we need to do more work on. Another key challenge for the IGF is raising the level of representation of certain groups within the, with within the forum. I'm thinking here of the underrepresented Global South, with which needs to be integrated much more strongly. I'm also thinking of the business community and representatives of, of government. France is leading by example, not least with the involvement of President Macron today. The government of Switzerland was also represented at a high level last year with Doris Leuthardt attending. We want to continue in this tradition next year in Germany. We are planning to have a high level segment as well. After all, when those hosting the IGF attach a high level of importance to the forum, so will those attending. This raises the level of attention around the event and also gets the media interested. The result is that the topics talked about at the H IGF gain greater focus among the public. But this is also something we need to be prepared for in advance. We need to prepare the content, groupings and shape of the discussions better so that the public can pick up on these more easily. 
Some things are already happening here, such as the Geneva messages, which were introduced by our Swiss host in 2017, a new feature that was well received and that has been taken up again this year by France in a good French style. Germany wants to carry on this new tradition next year. In turn, it's thanks to the MAC that there is now a greater number of standardized reports on the sessions held. The key question for policy are now being developed in greater detail and the media work is also being stepped up. Ladies and gentlemen, new ideas are needed to generate greater interest in the IGF among the public and also to really get all key stakeholders from all regions of the world on board. I understand that this is, all, this is also one of the main targets of the new UN high-level panel on digital cooperation. We need to make sure that our work is closely integrated in the work of the IGF. This is something Germany, as host of the IGF 2019, wants to beat the drum for. We want to continue in close dialogue with Switzerland, France and the future host of the IGF 2020. And we want to do everything in close cooperation with the MAC. We will, of course, preserve the fundamental character of the IGF. This means strengthening the IGF based on the multi-stakeholder model, with nothing ordained top-down. We are looking forward to continuing this work. The German federal government is proud to be hosting the IGF 2019. We hope to be able to welcome all of you here and many other guests from all around the world besides. And we host the IGF in Berlin next year. Thanks. Thank you very much. <coughs> Can't wait to be in Berlin. Uh, well, first, we have to finish Paris. Uh, Andrew Sullivan, uh, very happy to have you here. You joined the Internet Society quite recently. Uh, while you are not a uh, fresh fish in the Internet, of course. Um, uh, you were... Uh, very, uh, uh, you worked a lot on the uh, unknown internet, the, uh, the the things that make it works. Let's say it that way. Uh, and when I was talking at the beginning of uh, uh, the internet governance of the protocols and uh, uh, and in the underlying infrastructure versus the governance of the content, you were. Uh, working, and you are still, by the way, because Isaac is still working on that, of course, uh, on the underlying uh, landscape that let internet works. So, please, you have the floor to, to give us your vision of not only the IGF, but the internet governance in general. When, when you are, where are you on that uh, uh, kind of cake when you have uh, the infrastructure layer and the political layer? Thank you. Uh, thank you. Malheureusement, je ne veux pas continuer en français. La raison est évidente. Continue in, uh, in French because I am very bad at speaking French. Um, everybody at my university uh, in Ottawa would be very angry with me. In any case, I, I think that there is an important point in what you just said. The Internet Governance Forum is about the internet, and the internet is not one thing. This fact eludes us from time to time because we talk about the internet, right? We talk about the internet as though it's the table, as though it's the chair, but it's not like that. It's a, it's a network of networks. It's a thing that we use all the time. It's a, a, a way that we access uh, our email or send a telephone call to our mother or sometimes it's a way of reminding ourselves uh, of how uh, you know, other people are misfortunate because we see the news across the internet or something like that. There are many dimensions to the internet. And when we talk this way, we don't always speak in a way that makes clear what it is we're talking about. So if I want to talk about what the Internet Governance Forum can do for internet governance, or for that matter, if I just want to talk about internet governance generally, what I should do most urgently is remember what the internet is. That what we're talking about is a series of different pieces, each of which is operated independently. It's necessarily collaborative. You can't internet alone. You can only internet with other people. 
You can only internet with other networks. That's a fundamental fact. This isn't a political decision. This isn't a political discussion about whether we have to collaborate. It's a technical fact of the way the internet is designed. We have to collaborate because we don't have an internet otherwise. And that means that the fundamental ways of talking here at the IGF or in any of the internet governance uh, discussions where we take that seriously, they're automatically better precisely because we get that opportunity to recognize, oh, somebody else is trying to do something with this network. And if I want to collaborate with them, if I want to connect with them, if I want to gain the advantages that the internet brings me, I need to take into consideration what it is that they want, what it is that they need from the network, and thereby we can build a better network together. That's the fundamental thing. That's the necessary condition. That's the reason why discussions about, you know, one internet versus two internets versus, you know, the Californian or Chinese internet or something like that, none of those things are precisely the right way to think about this. It's the wrong filter. The right filter is to think about what do we collectively want to build? What do we want to experience? How do we want to communicate with one another? How do we want to achieve that greater value? And then how do we build that network? So there are some concrete things that we can do. One thing we can do is to focus on specific things that we could, we could work on, a specific problem. Here is a thing that we could actually solve. We could pick up some, some piece of this and work on it today. That doesn't mean that, for instance, the IGF needs to become a decisional body, but it can identify these things. I, I like the, um, these, these statements that say at the end, here is something that we, we, uh, we accomplish, we understand what this is. Then we can use the dynamic coalitions to identify those things and find people who want to work on them, and they go away and do a thing. Going away and doing a thing is also a part of the internet, right? You go off and you make a, uh, you make a, a difference in the world. Another thing we could do is spend more time listening. Um, so I'm conscious that I'm talking and other people are not. Um, one of the things that we should do is spend more time listening, right? That the sessions sometimes are taken up entirely by panels and not enough um, uh, discussion and uncovering those things. This is also a bit of a scheduling problem at the IGF, right? We could make concrete moves just by saying, okay, fewer panels on the same topic, one panel, maybe a longer session, actually dealing with um, this issue and trying to hammer out what the details of the issues are. I think that the MAG has actually gone some distance in, in trying to do this, but of course there's always pressure from the community to go the other direction. And what we need to do as a community is to recognize that that's a discussion that we have to have together. Having a discussion, of course, involves more listening than talking, and that's the reason that now I'm going to shut up. Thank you. Thank you very much. Andrew, so we want not to shut up, but what, for, for, for what you said before, of course. Uh, 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 now I have to give the floor uh, uh, to Lynn Saltamour. Everyone in this room knows Lynn, I guess, so I'm not going to take uh, too much time to, to introduce Lynn. I mean, she's uh, the chair of the multi-stakeholder adv advisory group. Um, uh, she uh, uh, has been involved in the IGF from, I mean, from a long time, uh, and and she 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 was also uh, 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 at a very important position in in, in Isaac. Uh, as the chair of the MAG, maybe uh, you have heard uh, several proposals or uh, or vision on how do we set the scene. If I want to to quote uh, Bertrand de la Chapelle, who invented that, how do we set the scene? How do we make sure that everything, the topics are understandable, clear. Uh, uh, this job is an incredible job that the multi-stakeholder adversary group does, but uh, how do you see the link between finding the topics, choosing them, and in a way making the internet govern governance evolving, making it more understandable by the people? Merci beaucoup, Pierre. First of all, if everyone in this room knows me, our outreach efforts have failed. <laughs> we really have tried um, quite hard to expand and really bring in new introductions. And in fact, I think we've had quite a number of, I mean, in the, the hundreds of um, people that have, are, are new registrants, first-time participants. Um, I'd like to speak just 
kind of very quickly to some of the concrete improvements the MAG, the Multi-Stakeholder Advisory Group, has made over the, the last several of years, because they go right to the heart of more tangible outputs. And um, we really need to hear from the community. We need your participation in this meeting in particular in terms of, of helping us um, advance some of those. So for instance, with how, how long we speak, um, each workshop organizer was asked to keep 50% of each session for uh, participation with the participants, so participant engagement. Um, the few I've been in today, we haven't quite met that yet, but it is a goal that was set, and you know, the workshop organizers are, are reminded, because it is about a dialogue. And dialogue, of course, informs us and, and will help us take those decisions away to the forums and places where they can be appropriately acted on, whether that's policy or a, a commercial policy. Um, we have um, certainly built on the Geneva messages this year. Last year it was for the main sessions. This year it is for every workshop session here, of which there are about 160 this time. Um, they will be IGF messages going forward because, of course, they are messages from the community. So that's most um, important. We have worked with the workshop organizers to um, try and facilitate how they actually draw conclusions and what were the key points that were made in the sessions and then how they're represented. We tried to learn from um, some, some of the efforts in the National Regional Youth IGF initiatives, which there are now over 110 formally recognized within the IGF, um, with respect to a lot of their processes. So try and do a quick ca call for those participants that are in the sessions to see if the messages that they are reading out resonate. It's, it's not a consensus call per se because it's not robust enough for that, but it should give a sense of the, the key messages and provide um, a, a additional support to some of the outputs. We're working more thematically. Um, we're going to change the chair summary to actually look like a, a thematic report and more of what I would say an executive summary as opposed to a he said, she said, it was said, it was noted. Um, of course, all of our sessions are transcribed and streamed and up on the IGF website within hours of them happening for the most part. Um, we have um, put a new survey in and this is where I really would like the support from the community because even if we have an hour session and there's 30 minutes and it's really robust participation, although typically it's not all that robust, um, we're still only hearing from a very small part of the community. And so the question we're asking every participant, both those participating here in the room and those participating online to ask, to answer specifically is, what can the IGF ecosystem do to impact this issue over the next year? And we want to hear from everybody. So we're asking everybody to go to the website, you have to log in as an IGF participant, but specifically, Concrete, specific, we'd like it framed in sort of a year or two so that we can actually do something with those suggestions. But what can the IGF ecosystem do to impact this particular issue? And it is nice if it's workshop specific. If not, then even just sort of tag specific. Um, coming to, I think, and, and that's, there are a lot of other, we have a number of working groups on a multi-year strategic work program, a working group on fundraising, a working group capturing all the improvements that have been suggested, whether it was through the CSTD working group on IGF improvements, the staking talk, taking stock um, exercises that we go through every year, a retreat that was organized by DESA a few years ago. We've captured all of those. Um, they've actually been consolidated. They're attributed with respect to what sort of issue it is, where can it best be addressed, and a working group is actually looking to, to put those out in the appropriate places in the community to advance on those improvements. Again, there's a, a lot of things we're doing within every one of those work groups. But I think the more strategic question for us, and, and certainly one that's been a priority for the IGF and the MAG for some years, is how do we increase engagement? and great engagement from governments and policymakers, senior policymakers, whether that's in an academic institution or an IGO or of course governments. How do we increase participation at a senior level from the private sector? And, and certainly how do we actually continue to reach out to those parts of the world that don't participate fully in the process here from those communities that are either marginalized or, or um, not able to participate deeply. Um, that's a strategic question. When we began the IGF, the day before the IGF opened, there used to be a full level, a full day of high level government meetings. The first one or two, this is kind of roughly accurate, but not exactly accurate. The first one or two were closed. 
Then they started to invite experts in for a few topics, and then it was open to observers, and then it became much more multi-stakeholder. And then, frankly, at some point, I think it started to look like a lot of the other sessions that were here, so we've kind of experimented with that over the last few years. Last year in Geneva, we discussed um, with uh, Thomas Schneider and, and Madame Leutard what was the right format. Uh, it turned out that the day before the IGF was a Sunday, so that was a little bit limiting in terms of, of structuring something here. But I, I think we need to really understand, you know, we hear governments calling for more space, governments calling for more information, governments calling for the opportunity to talk amongst themselves as well as with the, the community. On the other hand, the IGF community thinks that we provide that. We provide that because the IGF is supposed to be the platform where everybody participates on an equal footing. But we have some governments and countries that are very comfortable with that, many others who aren't. Everybody prefers a keynote speech, but not so much just being a panelist. Um, you know, and, and we need to find a way to break some of those discomforts. And at the same time, we need to find a way to understand better what it is that governments and policymakers are looking for, what could be helpful, and how can we best accommodate that across the entire IGF ecosystem. And I'm over time, which is why I'm trying to speak so quickly. But I'll just point out that there, it's not just this annual meeting. Again, there's over 110 national, regional um, IGF and youth initiatives. Um, there are 17 dynamic coalitions, artificial intelligence, trade, access. We have this year four best practice forums, and we have a major uh, policy initiative called Connecting and Enabling the Next Billions, which is in its fourth year. So there are a lot of activities. We have a lot of the structure in place that can allow us to, to progress all these issues a lot more completely. What's impacting us at the moment, frankly, is the resource within the Secretariat to do that. Um, and that's maybe a comment for a closing comment, but thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Lynn. So now we have 13 minutes to uh, have this uh, exchange with the room, uh, 13 minutes that would lead us to uh, 10 to uh, 7, I guess, no? Um, so we will uh, we we will take the first question. Yes. Bonjour. Hello. Thank you for giving me the floor to ask my question. I'm Mine Musses. I'm. Director General for the Council of Ministers in the Lebanon. I'm also I was also the President of the Arab Region in 2014-2015. So, Mr. Bonis, following the speech made by President Macron and the discussions that took place during the discussions that took place in the panel. Um, led by Mr. Matinon and this panel, certain ideas seem to suggest that now it's a time for reform. Indeed, as Mr. Um, Le Drian said, there's a risk of fragmentation. Um, yes, this is a risk. However, I would actually speak more about a threat, and I speak uh, under control of the Chinese or Russian delegations, going back to 2014, 2014 um, the Chinese government said that they would perhaps create their own internet, uh, which, would be, which would therefore create a divide between the Chinese internet and the internet used by the rest of the world. So when it comes to reforming the IGF so as to create an entity or a framework for regulation of the internet with a secretary general i would like to remind you of the history of the igf it's a forum a forum that works on the bottom up principle and indeed this forum which we are participating in today came to an end in 2015 and then if its mandate hadn't been renewed then we wouldn't be here today. 
because this is a forum of discussion. We come here together to debate, to deliberate, to discuss. We produce certain outputs. However, we don't really know what happens afterwards. We don't know if all of this information is quantified somewhere. We don't know if these outputs become inputs for something that goes beyond the IGF. And indeed, we know that often the IGF is um, not that well financed. We know that there are um, civil members of the civil society, students, interns who want to come and participate in the IGF, but some uh, member states don't really contribute as much as they could to it. So it's more like an informal space of debate between those from rich countries and poor countries, including the government delegations from those rich and poor countries. So it's more like a space of sharing ideas. And when we speak about regulation, we can say that it's authorities that regulate in a formal framework. It's a formal framework that works with the, um, with the partnership of governments and we need to have an authority to impose these regulations. But I think this is very different from the case of the IGF. If we go back to some of the comments made by Tunisia in 2003 and 2005. Tunisia, which launched the IGF, and it wasn't just the IGF, in fact, that was launched. There was the IGF, and then there was the other, which was Enhanced Cooperation. Yes, but I'd like to ask you to um, bring your question to, uh, to a close, because we'd like other comments to be made. Yes, but I would like to get to the end of my um, uh, idea. Just to say that I believe that the IGF should remain a space for discussion, cooperation, negotiation, dialogue, a bottom-up um, initiative. And I believe that we actually need to implement the enhanced cooperation between states. Mr. Bonis, I believe that you remember what happened in 2014 and what happened at the IUT's plenipotentiary meeting in Dubai. The United States would not accept this becoming a regulatory body. Thank you. Would anyone like to respond regarding the issue of enhanced cooperation? That's something that we have been speaking about since the World Summit. Minister, Minister uh, Mrs. Santamour. Minister, you have the floor. Well, just two words regarding what I perhaps didn't fully um, completely understand that was said by uh, our colleague from the Lebanon regarding the way that the IGEF works. The President of the Republic made two propositions proposals. The first was not to turn the IGF into a regulatory body, but that it continues to put forward ideas and to think up new ideas that could contribute to regulation. That's something that I believe strongly in. And also, we also believe that the IGF could, if it wishes to, become an observatory that could oversee the good um, implementation of the different ideas that stem from the, this forum. So it's perhaps a little bit different from the vision that you, um, sir, had in mind. And I'm going to have to leave the panel discussion um, very soon, because I uh, need to travel to another destination just after this um, forum. Okay, I don't know if you'd like to come back to what was said now, or perhaps in the closing remarks. Thank you. Are there any other comments from the floor? This is Pelosa from South Africa. Um, I think the topic we're talking about is um, how to strengthen internet governance. But I, um, 
surprised that the panel is made up of people from developing countries. And my question is, from developed countries, my question is, does the perspective from developing countries not matter in terms of how we move forward in strengthening internet governance? Because I think when you go back to the mandate that established the Internet Governance Forum was about inclusivity, participation from all stakeholders equally. It was about, you know, transparency and all of that. And I find it strange that we have a panel that's sitting there that is not inclusive. And I hope going forward, this will be taken into account to say that all the voices from developing and developed countries needs to be had. Thank you very much, madam. Uh, just a quick, very quick explanation. You have here the former, the actual, and the next host of the IGF, that three people out of the panel already. Uh, um, okay, Europe, 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 the three uh, who, uh, who, who, were, who agreed to host the IGF. And then you have uh, one international organization that happens to exist and uh, is also deputed in Africa, which is ISOC. And of course, the multi-stakeholder advisory group has a lot of African in its members. I just wanted to, 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 to say that. And, and, and especially for ISOC and MAG, I mean, they are not from developed or developing country, they are global. Yes, thank you, Chair. I'm Isabelle Durand. I am Secretary General, or, or Deputy um, Secretary General, for the uh, United Nations Agency, which um, gives support to developing countries when it comes to legislation in this area, when it comes to data protection and fighting against cybercrime, and indeed the experience that we have with 20 developing countries shows us how the issue of um, bringing together multi-stakeholders is something that is of great concern even in developing countries where often the ICT um, expertise is something that is not that visible and indeed often the ministries do not actually look at digitalization as being at the heart of development. Now I believe that IG, the IGF therefore also needs to be um, a forum that can actually come up with concrete tangible ideas and without wanting to incriminate the panelists uh, up on the stage but I believe that there needs to be um, the in, we need to have the inclusion of developing nations because Mr. Gutierrez and the French President Mr. Macron himself evoked this idea of a digital divide and there's an enormous divide with the developing um, world and indeed this developing world is putting a lot of energy into trying to um, catch up with the developed world and Indeed, this even in the area of existing legislation, not just the legislation to come. So I just wanted to add my um, grain of sand to the uh, discussions because we do a lot of work on the ground, working with governments um, in developing nations, so we would be happy to share our work with anyone who is interested. Thank you very much. If you want maybe to do some very quick closing remarks, uh, well, if you, okay. So, uh, Monsieur le Ministre, uh, je vous remercie pour votre participation. Miss Minister, I thank you for your uh, participation. I know you have other um, obligations. Thank you very much for being with us today. Uh, now I will give the floor for closing remark, including uh, maybe the, 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 the answer to the various questions and remarks uh, that, that, that has been said. Um, who wants to start? I don't have. Okay, then I start. <laughs> Thank you. I, I think what you said, inclusiveness is, is, is really uh, for us uh, also 
very important. In, in the panel we have from the sec UN Secretary General, one element will also be how can we use the digital technologies that are especially developing countries can be helped to reach the SDGs. I think this is a bridge builder and this will help also to uh, what you said or that uh, all these uh, technologies but also the skills and the capacities you need might be really helpful uh, uh, for develop developing countries to even accelerate their uh, economic development. I'm sure they will not do the same mistakes we did, so they will have the best profit from digital technologies we have. And perhaps another element which could be helpful uh, in my portfolio is also the, the climate change. And when you look at the Paris uh, uh, Agreement, it was also uh, well a forum where it was uh, uh, a lot of interaction, a lot of informal exchange. This is also for our uh, colleague from Lebanon. But you had always the informal dialogue and the government representatives because at the end of the day, you, you, we concluded an agreement. Soft law, but we had an agreement. So it was a mix between formal and informal, and it was very helpful to have at all the time uh, NGOs, civil society, which advised us that's a no go, this should be part of the agreement. So I think it's an interaction, and perhaps we could think about the IGF as a platform of discussion, like you mentioned, but also being a, a, a platform where political relevant people, governments can meet and from the advice, from their informal interaction with the community, then pass a, a, a regulation. So I think this could be perhaps a, a result of a process. As uh, Ms. Leuthard uh, just uh, told, uh, the IGF uh, is um, like a multi-stakeholder uh, forum which uh, guides uh, politics and uh, in Germany we would like to invite uh, the ministerial uh, high level uh, to our next uh, IGF in Berlin and uh, we think it's important that we have uh, politicians as well to talk about the uh, topics that IGF uh, is uh, giving us and uh, the colleague from uh, Lebanon is right you need politics to put thoughts into law so uh, we uh, in Germany, especially me, suggests today our parliamentary group who joins into the IGF to create something like a parliamentary uh, level uh, next year so that, pal so that parliamentarians uh, from uh, different and various countries have uh, the possibility to talk about uh, the topics IGF uh, is uh, giving us. And um, the colleague from uh, South Africa uh, I can tell that uh, we in Germany see that it is important that we have a broad uh, agenda and uh, mm -hmm. possibility for lots of stakeholders to join in the IGF, uh, especially uh, the participants, participants from uh, the southern part of the world. So in Germany we will give even money to uh, join in for uh, costs of traveling and for accommodation uh, in Germany so that uh, in Fithic uh, people can uh, join uh, the next IGF uh, again in Europe, what we know is a bit uh, expensive for lots of uh, stakeholders. And uh, a last point, what uh, we in Germany think is uh, an important issue and we would like to address uh, the next IGF is that uh, it's part of our German industry situation that uh, SMEs should uh, put into focus uh, uh, on what, what is their uh, special role uh, on uh, the perspective on uh, internet and uh, as you know our uh, German industry is quite successful in uh, IOT and industry 4.0 so we think uh, we should focus not only on the big companies but also for uh, the SMEs and the last point we uh, think that uh, IGE, uh, IGF uh, should uh, focus a little bit on AI because it is one of the uh, very, very big uh, topics for the future, uh, how it will uh, drive uh, the world uh, on all its um, 
on all it what is comes out of uh, AI. Thanks. Thank you, <coughs> Mr. Sullivan. Uh, thank you. I, it, it occurs to me that there is a link to be made uh, between the this this specter of um, balkanization or fragmentation of the internet and this question about development and diversity of the panel that was here. Uh, you know, the Internet Society spends a lot of its effort and, and money um, on trying to connect the unconnected. It's one of the main things that we work on. And the reason we do that is not because, um, it, it's not just because we believe the Internet is for everyone. Of course, we believe the Internet is for everyone. It's what we try to do every day. But it's also because diversity in networks is better for the overall Internet. The internet is better if it has multiple ways of connecting. It's better if it has multiple things that it expresses, and it's better if there are more views expressed through it. And that's the reason that we're so committed to that. Now, with that in mind, we can come back to this question of, of the, the balkanization of the internet. You know, the internet, because it's a network of networks, is, is almost automatically fragmented. It's almost certain, for instance, that in the network in your office or in your home, there's a printer that you can't print to from the entire internet. And that's fine. That's a fine thing. There's nothing wrong with that. That doesn't mean that the internet is fragmented. It means that there are things that you have that you don't want to be part of the internet. And there are ways that we could, we could gradually expand that so that whole countries or whole uh, large provider networks do not provide that access to the internet. And we think that would be a terrible thing. It would be a tragedy because the people who, are, who make that decision are depriving themselves of this marvelous tool. And so what we want to do is reach out to everybody and say, here's this tool for you. Here's a thing that we think really helps you, helps you achieve your goals, helps you do the things that you want. It has problems. It needs some work on security. We can work on that. We can work on it together. It has some problems with the way the routing system works. It has some problems with inclusion. There are a bunch of people who can't connect to it. But the solution to that is actually to make those things better and not to try to break up the internet into tinier and tinier pieces controlled by fewer and fewer people. That's the mistake. That would be the mistake. And what we must do is make this so attractive and so marvelous that people don't want to disconnect from it. That's the challenge to all of us, the challenge to the technical community, to industry, to governments, to all of us, to make sure that we actually provide that. And in that case, the next time, this panel will not look like this, and it will instead be much more diverse because the internet becomes more diverse that way. Thank you very much for inviting me today. Merci. Merci, Monsieur Sullivan. Thank you very much, Mr. Sullivan. I'd just like to take the final few seconds of interpretation left for us to um, give the floor to Mrs. Samour. So, I mean, the, the reason the Internet Governance Forum was necessary coming out of the WISIS is because a lot of the things we're facing, the world is facing for the first time. They're extremely complex, they're intertwined, they're nuanced, they're, they deal with political issues, cultural issues, technical issues, economic issues, social issues. So dialogue is important, listening is important. So we're not just a talk shop. And I don't care if you're on your route to a regulation or a policy or a soft norm. I mean, it's important that you talk and that we talk and listen broadly across stakeholders. So that's what we try to do. Um, we've tried to work very hard to make um, the IGF as inclusive for those that are participating online as those that have the means to come to wherever the IGF is held. And we are very thankful to France for stepping up. In February, we didn't have a host. By April, um, we had a host. Um, the way to get more participation from other parts of the world in the IGF is to volunteer to host <laughs> an IGF. And then we can pull in lots more people from these other regions. The earlier years of the IGF were really good in terms of how they were distributed. The last few years, um, Switzerland actually stepped up last year because we didn't have a host. We thought that was because with the 2015 WISIS um, Plus 10 that people weren't certain if it would be renewed or not and we lost some momentum. But then we had a problem this year as well. Germany has been in the queue for some time. We're very thankful for that. But that's why we had this, this aggregation of, of European IGFs here. We desperately want to go to other regions. Um, so please, if anybody has an interest in, in hosting an IGF, um, we would be very, very happy to talk to you and, and explain what that, that engages. 
With respect to enhanced cooperation, um, they uh, met over several years earlier this year, and they concluded um, by not being able to approve a report on their work. A lot of the arguments there that they polarized on were frankly the same arguments that were in WISIS 1 and, and WISIS 2. Out of, this, out of that set of activities, though, there were a lot of really good suggestions and a lot of good problem statements, if you will, about what would help governments and what they were looking to resolve. And I think the IGF can go some ways towards addressing those. I think the IGF community needs to really think, as I said earlier, strategically about how we engage and, and how do we understand what's the right way to help the governments in the way they want to be helped and in a way that actually works with, of course, the, the DNA of the IGF and within the, the, the Tunis mandate. So I'll stop there because I know we're significantly over time, but you know, there's a lot more I'd love to say. So I think please come find me if you have any specific questions or, or points. Thank you very much, Lynn, and thank you everyone for being here till late. Thank you to all the panelists, uh, and have a good evening. And a good idea, by the way.